Hello, my friends. Welcome to another knowledge lesson. Before we start today, let's take a look really quickly at our Fighting for a Cause timeline that we created in our last lesson. We've got two pictures that happen that are in the same spot because they happened at the same time. These two people lived during the same period in American history. Who are those two people? I know it's a little bit far away from the camera. We've got Abraham Lincoln and Susan B. Anthony. We talked mostly about Susan B. Anthony in our last lesson. Remember Susan B. Anthony and Abraham Lincoln both fought for the rights of enslaved people to end slavery. And Susan B. Anthony also fought for the right for women to be able to vote. Today, we are going to learn about another special lady in American history, just like Susan B. Anthony. Today, we are going to be learning about a woman named Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt helped many people in American history. She was married to one of the presidents of the United States. And while she was married to this president, she was able to travel around the world and around the country and see firsthand the struggles that certain people had. Now, she, while, while her president was, while her husband was president, whew, got a little tongue tied there, sorry friends. While her husband was president, she worked very hard to help these people that she saw struggling, and she continued to help them even after he was no longer president. When he was president, her, she was married to the president during a very difficult time in United States history. When President Roosevelt was our president, our country was experiencing what we call the Great Depression. During the Great Depression, many people didn't have jobs and often did not have enough money for food or sometimes even homes. It was during this time that Eleanor fought to have the government give more citizens rights so that they would have more opportunities. So we call these civil rights. These rights that she fought for for the citizens were called civil rights. But Eleanor Roosevelt did not only fight for civil rights, she also fought for human rights. Human rights are rights that are not promised by, by the government to all people, such as the right to vote or the right not to be discriminated against, but they are usually considered to be important rights that everyone should have anyway. Some of these rights are the right to have food and a place to live, the right to an education, and the right to a job. So obviously during the Great Depression, some people were not being given those rights because there were not enough jobs, food, or money. She worked very hard. That was the cause that she fought for, was to make sure those rights were being given to those people by the government, human and civil rights. We will talk about how she did that and how she fought for that cause, but first we need to do our vocabulary words. First Lady. The First Lady is the wife of the President of the United States or the wife of the Governor of a state. Mary Todd Lincoln became the First Lady of the United States in 1861 when her husband, Abraham Lincoln, became President. Admirable. The word admirable refers to someone or something that deserves respect. President Lincoln's leadership during the Civil War was admirable. Think of someone or something that you think is admirable. Turn to whoever is helping you today and talk about why you think this person or thing is admirable. Be sure to use the word admirable when you are having this discussion. Devotion. Devotion is extreme dedication or attachment to a cause or person. Susan B. Anthony's work was a lifelong devotion to achieving equal rights for women. Human rights. 
Human rights are rights that are believed to belong to everyone, such as food, a place to live, and the right to an education and a job. Eleanor Roosevelt devoted the last part of her life to improving human rights for everyone. Politics. Politics are the activities of the people involved in the government or activities that attempt to persuade people in government. Several former presidents continue to be involved in American politics. One of the most admirable women in American history was one named Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. She is commonly known as Eleanor Roosevelt. She was born a long time ago in 1884. But just like Susan B. Anthony, her achievements made the world a better place. Although Eleanor's family was very wealthy, they believed in helping those less fortunate. This means that they believed in helping those who had little money or who had particular needs. So from an early age, Eleanor learned to care about people who struggled to survive. Eleanor did not have a happy childhood. For part of it, Eleanor and her, and her brother were raised by their grandmother. Although Eleanor loved her grandmother, she thought her grandmother was strict because she would not let Eleanor read books in bed, and she made Eleanor wear long black stockings, even in the summertime. When Eleanor was 15 years old, she was sent to an English boarding school for girls. We learned about how Susan B. Anthony also went to a boarding school. Remember, a boarding school is a school where students live at the school instead of going home at the end of the school day. Eleanor was very happy there. She made lots of friends, and her French teacher, Marie Sauvestre, thought that she was a wonderful student. It was from Marie that Eleanor developed a love of learning and an interest in travel. Eleanor said that her three years there were one of the happiest times in her life. When Eleanor was 18 years old, she returned to New York. It was an exciting time for Eleanor. Her uncle, Theodore Roosevelt, had just become the President of the United States. In those days, wealthy young girls like Eleanor went to parties to meet wealthy young boys. Eleanor's grandmother hoped that Eleanor would meet a young man whom she could marry. Eleanor did meet someone. She met Franklin D. Roosevelt, her distant cousin. They liked each other and began to date. Franklin thought that Eleanor was very smart and kind. They were both eager to work for their country. Franklin and Eleanor decided to get married. They were married in New York City, and President Theodore Roosevelt walked the bride down the aisle. Eleanor was 21 years of age. During the next 10 years, Eleanor gave birth to six children. Anna, James, Elliot, Franklin Jr., John, and another son who died when he was a baby. Eleanor's husband, Franklin, was interested in politics. In 1911, he won a political position in the New York Senate. The family moved to Albany, the New York State Capitol. Two years later, Franklin was appointed Assistant Secretary of the Navy. This time, the family moved to Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. Eleanor spent a great deal of time with her family. She also worked on many projects, reached out to people who needed help. In 1921, Franklin was stricken with polio. Polio is a virus or disease that can cause paralysis or make it impossible to move part of the body, such as the legs. Fortunately today, there is a vaccine against polio to protect people from getting the disease. Because of the polio, Franklin could not get around very easily. He spent many hours in a wheelchair. Franklin had hoped to become president one day. He was afraid that he would no longer achieve his dream. Eleanor demonstrated great devotion to her husband. She was determined to do everything she could to help her husband fulfill his ambition to be president. 
Remember, the word ambition means a determination to achieve something. Nine years after being stricken with polio, with Eleanor's help, Franklin became the governor of New York. The governor is the head of the state government, similar to the way in which the president is the head of the, of the entire country's government. Then, on March 4, 1933, Franklin D. Roosevelt became the 32nd president of the United States. Eleanor was by his side as the First Lady. Franklin D. Roosevelt had become president during one of the most difficult times in American history. This period was known as the Great Depression. Millions of people were unemployed or without a job. Many were hungry and desperate. Hundreds and thousands of men, women, and children stood in line at soup kitchens Soup kitchens are places where food is provided for free to those in need. Franklin and Eleanor were saddened by what was happening to so many Americans. They promised to help them. Eleanor traveled all over the United States, acting as her husband's eyes and ears. She met with groups of people and asked them how her husband could help them. Eleanor told Franklin all about the things that she saw. She told him about the difficulties that so many people had faced. She told him about the good things that were happening too. Eleanor's reports to her husband helped Franklin to make decisions. With millions of Americans unemployed, it was difficult for many people to find jobs. Eleanor focused on finding ways to create new employment opportunities, especially for African Americans. Eleanor persuaded her husband President Franklin Roosevelt set up an advisory group called the Black Cabinet. The members of this group were talented and successful African Americans who were specifically chosen for their skills. Their job was to find ways to improve the lives of African Americans who were living in poverty. Eleanor's friend, Mary McLeod Bethune, was one of those group members. We'll learn more about Mary later in this domain. Like Eleanor, she was a remarkable woman. Eleanor believed that two heads are better than one. So together, Eleanor and Mary set up the National Youth Administration and the Division of Negro Affairs. These programs helped many young African Americans pay for their education. Just like today, Better education provides better employment opportunities or a chance to get a better job. Eleanor dedicated much of her life to working for civil rights and human rights. Remember, those human rights are rights that are believed to belong to everyone, such as food, a place to live, an education, and a job. As the First Lady, Eleanor had many chances to speak about the problems facing America. During the Great Depression, Eleanor had a radio show and she wrote a newspaper column. In addition to campaigning for equality for African Americans, children, women, and the poor, Eleanor also campaigned for the rights of Native Americans. Eleanor highlighted the fact that Native Americans were being pushed off of their land and that their way of life was continually threatened. In 1939, Eleanor took a stand against discrimination. Eleanor belonged to an organization called the Daughters of the American Revolution. When the Daughters of the American Revolution would not allow a talented African-American singer named Marian Anderson to sing a hall they owned in Washington, D.C., Eleanor left the organization. Eleanor later gave permission for Marion to sing at the Lincoln Memorial. More than 75,000 people came to support her, her and hear her wonderful voice. Even after the death of her husband, Franklin, Eleanor continued to work for human rights. In 1946, President Harry S. Truman asked Eleanor to work at the United Nations an organization 
that includes many of the countries of the world. The main goal of the United Nations, even today, is world peace. But it also works to reduce po poverty and help all people in need. The following year, Eleanor became the leader of the United Nations Commission on Human Rights. She helped write an important document called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This document states that all people should have the right to work, the right to rest, the right to an education, and the right to share in the life of their own community. Eleanor discovered that most people in the world want the same basic rights. Eleanor considered this to be her greatest achievement. Why do you think Eleanor thought that helping to write the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was her greatest achievement? For many years, Eleanor traveled to Asia, Middle East, and Europe. She often spoke about the importance of peace in our world. It isn't enough to talk about peace. One must believe in it, she said, and it isn't enough to believe in it. One must work at it. Eleanor was First Lady from 1933 to 1945. She was First Lady longer than anyone else, and she was an excellent role model for other First Ladies. She once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Eleanor tried to live by these words and continued to work for world peace and an end to, po to poverty until her death on November 7, 1962. She died in New York City and was buried at Hyde Park, New York, her husband's family home. Eleanor Roosevelt was truly a remarkable lady. All right, my friends, I have got some questions for you about Miss Anna Eleanor Roosevelt. How would you describe Eleanor Roosevelt's childhood? Was her family very, very poor, like some of the families she saw in, during the Great Depression? No, they were in fact very wealthy. Who did she have to live with though? Her grandmother. Did she like living with her grandmother? No, her grandmother was very strict. So she was kind of an unhappy child. But who taught her during her childhood? the importance of helping other people. Her parents, you've got it. How did Eleanor become her husband's eyes and ears? We heard that she became his eyes and ears. How did she become his eyes and ears? She traveled all around the country and told her husband about all of the things that she saw, as well as the things that people told her about. Now she was married to a president, so we have a special title for someone who's married to the president. Dolly Madison was our very first. What do we call someone who's married to the president? The first lady. Doll er, Dolly Madison was our first first lady, but Eleanor Roosevelt was the first lady of the United States at this time. What was the Great Depression again? We talked a lot about the Great Depression today. What was the Great Depression? Exactly. The Great Depression was a very difficult time in American history when many people did not have jobs and could not afford food or sometimes even homes. What were some of the groups of people that Eleanor tried to help?
Eleanor Roosevelt was a remarkable woman who tried to help lots of different groups of people. She helped the poor. She helped the women and children. She helped African Americans and Native Americans as well. One important cause that she fought for was human rights. Can you tell me what it means to have, what it means to fight for human rights? Fighting for human rights means fighting to make sure that all humans are treated fairly and to make sure that everyone has rights that are not promised by the government that all humans should have, like the right to an education or homes or food. Take a minute to think of some words that you would use to describe Eleanor Roosevelt. What kind of person was she? Was she lazy or hardworking? Was she rude or was she kind? What kind of words would you use to describe her? We are going to add this picture of Miss Roosevelt to our timeline. Now, did the time that she was helping people, the Great Depression and afterwards as well, did that happen before Abraham Lincoln and Susan B. Anthony's time or after? This was later in American history. So I'm going to put Eleanor Roosevelt next to Abraham Lincoln up here, later on our timeline. Today we are going to write another free verse poem about Eleanor Roosevelt. Go ahead and open up the PDF that's attached to this assignment, and I will jump over to my computer and show you what to do. Today, we are going to work on another free verse poem. Remember, in a free verse poem, the words, phrases, and rhythm help tell, tell the poet's opinion. Our free verse poem today is going to be about Eleanor Roosevelt's achievements. The first step in the writing process is always to plan. So the first thing we'll want to do is fill out our bubble map about Eleanor Roosevelt and her achievements. We'll probably want to turn this on its side again so we can fit things on our map a little bit better. The first thing we'll want to do is the very center. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see our whole map. Today, our poems are going to be about Eleanor Roosevelt. Eleanor Roosevelt was a very admirable and remarkable woman. There was a lot that she did. The cause that she fought for was human rights. She didn't just fight for human rights for one certain group of people. She fought for human rights for many groups of people who were disadvantaged, such as African Americans, Native Americans, women, and those who were poor or lived in poverty. Remember, she lived during what we call the Great Depression, where many people in America were poor or living in poverty, which is extreme poorness. Many of them were unemplo unemployed and had no jobs and no money to feed themselves, so they were in desperate need of help. Eleanor Roosevelt was the first lady for several years, while her husband, Franklin D. Roosevelt, was president. She also worked for what we call the United Nations. There we go. The United Nations is a group of representatives from many different countries in the world that work together for world peace and to put an end to poverty. As part of the UN or United Nations, 
Eleanor Roosevelt wrote a very important document. That document was the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. She found that many people wanted the same rights all across the world. She made a list of human rights that everyone was entitled to or that everyone should have. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Eleanor worked very hard to make sure that everyone was treated fairly and that everyone received those same human rights. Oof, there we go. Oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time typing today, friends, sorry. That everyone was treated fairly and received human rights. This was very important to her because of the way that she grew up. She grew up learning that it was very important to help people who needed it or who were less advantaged than she was. Eleanor was a very strong and very kind woman who supported her husband even when he was stricken with polio and was wheelchair bound. She also worked with a wonderful woman named Mary McLeod Bethune for education. In the time when she lived in the United States, there were groups of people that did not receive a fair education. We learned when Susan B. Anthony went to school that the boys were given a better education and were treated better than most girls. Eleanor Roosevelt worked to make sure that that was not the case. All right, my friends, there are lots of other things that you can talk about Eleanor Roosevelt. She truly was a remarkable woman. She did a lot of amazing things for this country and the people in it, and people around the world when she worked with the United Nations. Your ideas on your map might be different than mine. That's okay. It does not have to look the same. There might be other things in our read aloud that you learned about Eleanor Roosevelt that you think are more important that you would want to include in your poem. And that's okay. Your, your map does not have to look exactly like mine. I want you to plan what you want to write, not what I want to write. When you have got your plan filled out, you will use that to write a poem. We'll have to flip that paper this way again. Again, you can title your poem anything that you would like, but the name of the person that it is about is a good plan. Forgotten E is a good title for your poem. You don't have to title your poem after the person it is about, but you. But it's a good idea if you can't think of any other name. You want to use your ideas from your bubble map to create your free verse poem. Your poem, this is the one that I wrote about Eleanor Roosevelt, your poem will obviously look different. Now, I have to confess something to you, friends. Miss Hill doesn't like writing free verse poems because I don't feel like I'm very good at it. I like having a structure to follow when I'm writing poems instead of free verse, but I admire the form of free verse poetry, and I actually have really liked trying it out in these lessons. Mine might not be very good. I'm sure lots of yours will be much better than mine, and that's okay. Even if you are like me, and you feel a little insecure about free verse poetry, or like you can't write it very well, or as well as other members in your class, that's okay. All that matters is that you try it. I know sometimes it can feel awkward. I think it feels a little awkward for me to not write in complete sentences and just use words or phrases, but it is very beautiful. It is a beautiful form of poetry, and 
it's fun to try. It's fun to try new things. I want you to look at this as a fun experience, even if you're feeling a little unsure about it. It's okay if your poetry is not amazing. I don't think mine is the best poem in the world, but I had fun trying it, and that's what's important. When you do have your poem written and titled, go ahead and turn this one in. I'm sure they will all be beautiful. And you are all finished with knowledge today, my friends.